Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So in a previous video, we did some flux core uh, on what I considered to be thin gauge material, and it was eighth inch. Now in my defense, I'm an iron worker, eighth inch is pretty damn thin, but uh, the comment section went a little haywire. Some of y'all got out and said that that's not thin gauge material. So hopefully today I'll be able to redeem myself a little bit. I have some 18 gauge material or 050, and I reached out to our good buddy Jerry Matheson with Select Arc. Okay, this is our uh, second pass. I did a full weave to find out his recommendations for thin gauge sheet metal. So today we're going to be using some 700 GS. It's specifically designed for the 115 applications in your garage. So you can use this on body panels and things of that nature. 22 gauge material all the way up until 3 16 and it works well on galvanized. So for those of you that were asking, how do I weld galvanized material? Try switching to this wire and uh, you know get back with us on the results. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna run uh, about 150 inches a minute on wire feed speed and 15 volts. So we'll do a couple laps, T-joints, and then maybe a little bit of a thin gauge sheet metal for y'all, 18 gauge, uh, to some thick material, which is uh, eighth inch. So we'll try to do a lap joint on that, see how it turns out. Let's go ahead, let's get into it. All right, so other than the, uh, the small wormhole that I got here from holding my contact tip to work distance too close uh, initially on my tack, everything else went pretty good. Uh, very smooth running wire. Very surprised that we could do that on 18 gauge with flux core. Uh, let's go ahead and run a T-joint configuration, same two, two piece of 18 gauge, and then we'll do the thick to thin right after that. All right, so as you can see, I'm moving a little bit faster with my travel speed. That's because the previous coupon that I did, I didn't uh, account for that. I ran it like I normally do, and I kind of blew a hole in that piece. So this is my second uh, second attempt here. I'm going to go through, moving a little bit faster, just watching the puddle, make sure it's wetting in. Uh, you'll notice that I'm pointing a little bit higher up on the vertical leg, and that that's because this stuff runs a little bit more fluid, and it likes to sag a little bit. So just point a little bit higher on that vertical wall, move a little bit faster, you shouldn't have any issues. You can also see on the backside camera that uh, you know we're getting ample penetration, we're not blowing holes in this stuff. Uh, overall, it's a, it's a really good running wire. All right, so it went in there pretty good. Yes! It's pretty smooth overall. You gotta move a little bit faster than you typically uh, you think you should. Didn't get an obsessive amount of penetration on the back. We got good penetration through and through. As I said, you wanna make sure that you're moving quick. This is the second piece that I did. The, the first one is here. I blew about a half inch hole in there. Um, traveling, you know, snow, slow like I normally would. So you just gotta pick up your travel speed just a little bit. And uh, you know, the results are much greater that way. So let's go ahead, uh, we'll do a, a thin to thick on a uh, eighth inch and 18 gauge. All right, so we have the thicker plate on the bottom, thinner plate on the top, so that's the eighth inch on the bottom, 18 gauge on top. Anytime you're doing thick to thin, you wanna to try to concentrate the majority of your heat on the thicker part and just kind of wash that weld up into the thinner component. So as I was going through there, I was just washing the edges of that puddle right up onto the 18 gauge, gave me a nice good tie-in, everything's nice and clean. Uh, well, you know, the wire flowed very smooth. You're gonna notice that, uh, once again, I'm traveling a little bit faster because if you hang out too long and wash too much of that puddle over, you're gonna start developing openings right there at the toe of the weld and you wanna avoid that at all costs. So just watch your travel speed, watch your travel angle, and you shouldn't have any problems. All right, so hopefully I was able to redeem myself by welding on some gauge material instead of eighth inch, uh, as which, you know, that's what I considered thin, but uh, apparently I was wrong. So hopefully that helps you guys out for those of you who are asking how to weld on thinner material with flux core. So if you have a 110 machine at your house, don't feel defeated because you got some body work that you wanna do, you got some pans you gotta put in the old car, whatever you're, you know, you're uh, attaching some new floorboards and a hoopty, uh, you shouldn't have any issues. Go get you some 700 GS. You can run it on any of your 110 machines at the house. You shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Remember, watch your travel speed and travel angle, uh, and you shouldn't have any issues. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something along the way. And until next time, make your world better than your last.